Hello there, welcome to another weekend video um, from bullwiz.org, uh, obviously. And uh, thanks for joining me for this uh, little soiree into uh, the markets and uh, see what happens this week. Um, just want to let you guys know that I have um, a free access week uh, upcoming uh, next week on the site, bullwiz.org. If, uh, if you get onto the email list, um, I'll be sending out nightly updates uh, to the nine markets that I cover. So if you're interested in that, pop over to the website and uh, join the email list. I'll leave a link in the description and uh, you can check that out. Um, I hope you enjoy it. Uh, OK. As always, I'm going to start on the let's get onto the four hour chart. I'm going to start on the four hour charts and we'll work down to the hourly charts or the half hour chart. And uh, we'll try and kind of pull apart what happened this week and uh, paint a picture for next week. Um, across the markets this week, it's been pretty Decent so far for um, uh, apart from stocks, but say we'll get into that later. It's been a, a pretty decent week for uh, the wave counts. There's always alternates, um, up and coming alternates, possible alternates <laughs> that you have to keep an eye out for. Uh, the markets are a minefield. Um, you have to kind of stay limber and uh, to keep uh, abreast of what actually uh, what I'm rambling here now. <laughs> <laughs> there's always the point being there's always alternates and we always have to keep an eye out for them but uh, so far so good for the operating wave counts okay so here's your dollar uh this is again i'll probably i don't know how long i'll be talking about this uh wave one down um probably for the next year until it disappears to the left side of the chart here and you don't see it anymore but uh five waves down in wave one off the end of a, a large triangle and we either have wave two complete after the recent rally or we're working on um, a larger wave two and that could be something like um, three ways up three ways down five ways up maybe a larger uh, flat kind of correction but we'll see how that goes um, it's impossible to call it right now uh, for now seeing as the seeing as we have five waves down off that uh, recent high i'm kind of i am open to the idea that wave two is complete and they were working on a, a very large degree wave three to the downside. OK, so uh, that's the four hour chart. Let's get on to the hourly chart. So you, there you see that's the high of the recent wave two. Um, off that high, we had a we had this initial target here anyway at the, at the previous fourth wave. And we had five waves down. So we were expecting to at a minimum reach that in that previous fourth wave. And we got there uh, to 117. Uh, 34 level so off that high we've had pretty decent five waves down i was last night calling this a failed fifth wave but i'm changing that tonight um the idea being that this could be a three waves up a three waves down and b after today's kind of sharp decline and we might see a five waves up in wave c uh, next week and that's kind of my working pieces at the moment is that uh, B waves is, is likely complete or will complete um, nearby or at support uh, supports at 115.27 and we'll probably see uh, a spike higher than early next week probably Monday Monday into Tuesday uh, to complete three waves in a possible wave two at one higher degree in brackets there um, so if that's the case if that happens uh, next week then we'll be looking at um, uh, an impulse wave to the downside, a bearish Elliott wave signal, and um, you would be kind of lining up for uh, lining up to jump in on the short side, with the minimum uh, expectation being that we would get at least a decline uh, to match uh, the previous decline. So if, even if this is going to be a three wave decline and we get a larger move uh, in wave two, then you would expect at least uh, prices to to reach about 114 20 so the low 14s um after uh, a high 16s complete um so that's the the outlook for now uh, either that or we'll accelerate lower break support in a third wave down okay so that's uh, euro dollar so let's move on to pound dollar again pound dollar is um well, we're 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 moving in the right direction. Uh, let's say with pound dollar, uh, we have a possible complete uh, wave two, and we 
we may be working down on, on an impulse wave uh, off that high there again. Uh, so, so far, so good for the completion of wave two. But again, the same thing stands as with um, euro dollar. We could be seeing three waves up, three waves down, and uh, five waves up in a larger wave two. And the previous fourth wave in um, in pound dollar was at was at about 133. So we could see a larger move up to 133 in wave two. But we'll see uh, again. We'll be following this next week uh, on the nightly updates. Uh, so let's get down to the hourly chart. Someone should count how many times I say ah in this. <laughs> it's a bad habit. Okay, so today, uh, again, there we go. <laughs> so today we have possibly wave two in green complete. It looks like we have five waves up in a C wave. We've hit the target at about 130. I think we were looking for 130, 30. So we're more or less in that ballpark range now. Um, the, uh, the fact that we got a nice uh, spike lower off that high, uh, we, we came close to the upper trend line and we've got a spike lower again. Now, I know <clears throat> it does kind of complicate the matter that we have an internal B wave of an expanded flat within B wave B, and we didn't break that high. But in my book, it still counts because we broke the wave A high. So what I'm I'm looking at here is wave three waves up, three waves up in a, wave A, three waves uh, expanded flat wave B, and five waves up in wave C. So we've got a three three five structure. Um, we didn't get to break the previous extent of the. The internal wave B, but we didn't have to. We had to break the previous extent of the um, wave A brackets there. So the minimum target was uh, 129.30, and we broke that in five waves. So I think we're the the likelihood is that we've completed this uh, three wave correction here in wave two. Um, again. The caveat is there that we could be looking at a, a larger uh, wave two pattern unfolding, but that will kind of re reveal itself over next week, I'd say. Um, I think if we get a break of support at 126.60 there, that will probably rule out the larger wave two. Um, so that's what we'll kind of keep an eye on uh, for next week. Uh, in the short term, Monday, I think we'll probably see further selling and we should get a lower high in a second wave. Alrighty, uh, dollar yen. My throat is getting dry already. I need to uh, lubricate, but uh, <laughs> I'm upstairs. Kids are downstairs, and I ain't going down there. <laughs> it's a madhouse. Alrighty, uh, dollar yen. Okay, the, the signs are looking good for dollar yen uh, in the short term. Again, there is a caveat on on this, which I'll get into. Well, I may as well talk about it now. Um, the, the alternate count, uh, the second alternate count uh, views this high as the high of wave one. And what we could be seeing is an A down, A, B, C um, running flat and a uh, wave C unfolding, which should target about 108. And that's the second alternate. So uh, we're a way off kind of um, confirming that just yet. For now, off the recent low, we have five waves up, and we seem to have a complete three waves uh, down, which we were watching uh, throughout the week there. Um, so let's get to the short-term chart. So that's our, our flat pattern off. Um, would you look at that? Uh, another spike lower uh, after a nice rally up, a spike lower this evening, which is it's funny when I was just checking the charts a few minutes ago, that wasn't there. <laughs> hey, okay, so we had a uh, three-wave pattern it completed in wave two, uh, possibly, and now we had a after kind of breaching the the slightly breaching that lower uh, trend line there, we had um, a nice impulsive move to the upside. So we've got a bar down um, this evening. So what we want to do in the short term is we want to on Monday we want to see uh, one ten thirty eight or what was that actual low? The actual low was at. If the program actually gives me the actual low, it won't give it me. Well, ain't that a dream? My MetaTrader has been kind of acting up this uh, this last few days, as you know. If 
you've been following. So 110.37, I think was uh, more or less the actual low there. So we want to see that this this, this bar uh, down this evening, we want to see that one twenty one hold above 110.37 and a further rally up above resistance there, uh, or at least a break of the previous wave one there, which was at 111.80 um in a possible way one up so and obviously if we get a break of that uh, support level there at uh, 109.76 which was the recent uh, most extreme low um that will rule out the bullish pattern uh for the in the short term and we'll work on a, a larger uh wave two as i spoke about a while ago okay so that's the fx market covered in a nice nutshell there Let's get into the, the murky world of stocks. Okay, so we've had a move down off the high. It's still possible to count that as a um, five waves down and a possible correction of that high. Looks like, again, we've got uh, further selling this evening, which is reflected in dollar yen just a minute ago. So isn't this exciting to do this live? <laughs> I'd rather not do this. Uh, I'd rather wait till the market was closed, but... Um, God, then I don't get the video at 11 o'clock at night and uh, I'm falling asleep at that stage. So uh, I think it's better to kind of get it done as it's half five here now in Ireland. So uh, the London market's closed. So half of the market is closed, let's say. <laughs> um, so this is uh, obviously the four hour chart. And now uh, we can see the market selling down this evening again, which is it's good for me, um, not good for the market. So we're, we're, we're looking at a five, a complete wave two, which you know if you've been following these videos for the last while, and uh, five waves down and a possible correction higher. So let's get into the hourly chart and see what's happening. So looks like we've got a break of that previous wave three, which is good. Uh, this evening at 25.885. We, this is obviously a derivative chart, so the there is a slight uh, variation between um, the actual cash, uh, the structure on the cash market, as there is, which appears on my charts, because uh, prime example was on Monday, the, the US market was closed, but uh, the derivative market wasn't. So um, there's part of this structure here appears on my chart and it's not uh, visible on the, uh, the cash um, chart. But you know that already. I'm trying. To, I'm preaching to the masses here. Okay, so looks like we have five waves down. We had a nice um, uh, grind higher within a corrective move higher within the trend channel, and we're selling down out of that again. So the the decline out of the the high labeled wave two is is yet to kind of prove itself as an impulse pattern. Although um, we're selling down again this evening, as you can see. So it may develop into uh, a five wave pattern in a possible wave three. So next week we'd be looking for uh, five waves down in wave three and a break of uh, recent or the next uh, support level at 25603. So that'd be the minimum target for uh, wave three. And we'd probably bounce around there for a while uh, and sell down again to complete a larger five waves down. At that point, then we'd be looking at um, kind of lining up um, getting your ducks in a row for a possible kind of uh, a bear market beginning scenario, um, but one step at a time. Uh, let's take tonight's um, action as a step in the right direction, and uh, we'll see how it unfolds from here. Okay. So you, you can see that's, that's the short-term coverage, short-term count covered in uh, stocks. Expecting a, a further decline next week. Okay, so let's move on to what will I move on to? I'll move on to gold. So this is the four hour chart in gold. Um we're looking at a, a possible five waves up complete and uh, maybe even uh, that'll be a wave one and a wave two complete uh, off the most extreme recent low, which was which was uh, 1160 so we've had a nice um, 40 dollar rally into the high and we're selling off correctively uh, price is kind of uh, it's undecided at the moment whether this correction is complete or we may 
we may even uh, see a larger a kind of um, three wave pattern, some sort of combination pattern of that, that wave one high. So let's get down to the hourly chart and see what I'm looking at here. So we've got five waves up. I'm labeling that wave one. Uh, we may even move to a higher degree depending on how the um, the price action unfolds over the next week or so. We've got a one and um, three waves down in wave two. We've got a uh, short term pattern, possible wave one and three waves down in wave two. Again, we see this lower high is holding. Uh, we have the recent uh, low of wave two at uh, 11.89. So for Monday and early next week, we want to see 11.89 at a min minimum. We want to see that hold and we want to see further uh, impulsive rally in a possible wave three of three break of resistance there. This is the, the long held number of 1217. I've been barking about that figure for the last few weeks. Um, if we get a break of that, I, I, I think we could be moving to full on bullish mode. And we have a further significant resistance at 12, six, or 1265. So that could happen quite easily if this uh, wave three up accelerates um, as I think it could. Okay, so that's gold. Uh, we're looking for further upside next week. Okay, cap that off quite nicely there, didn't I? So this is crude oil. So crude oil has sold down again this week. A nice uh, impulsive pattern to the downside. It looks the the odds are mounting that we have um, a very significant high in at seventy four there, and we could have. Uh, five waves down and expanded flat wave two three waves up and we're looking at uh, again a further decline and acceleration lower in a a large third wave so let's uh, label that up here while i'm at it as usual sleeping on the job here should have that done okay so a large third wave down um you would say that you'd let's get a minimum target on that uh, or let's get a, a likely target and a minimum target so a minimum target would be where wave uh, three equals wave the length of wave one so you're talking about break of support at, at least at 63 um most more than more likely would be uh, the 161.8 uh, percent extension so you're talking about 58 20 so the low 58s for uh, initial target for a possible wave three down. So let's keep that in mind uh, over the next few days or a couple of weeks anyway. So it's going to the hourly chart. You can see that we're tracking five waves down. I mean, we may even have that five waves complete at tonight's low, but it, it depends, or today's low, depends on how the correction kind of plays out from here in a possible wave four or a possible wave two the higher the correction uh, the more likely that it's in uh, a wave two and if we get a break of that previous wave one low which is within there at about 68.50 or thereabouts uh if you get a if you get a move above uh towards 69 again then we'd be talking about um relabeling this as wave one at the low and wave two uh, completing at a higher point. So for now, uh, given that we had a, a further sell down today and we had a, a clear five wave pattern in a possible wave three, I'm looking at uh, an extension lower in wave three and wave four and five to come. Um, just kind of eyeing it at the moment, you would expect to hit about the maybe a break of 66 uh, to complete wave uh, one down. Uh, at that point, we'd look for three waves up, a clear impulse pattern to the downside, and um, that'd be a, a bearish Elliott wave signal. We've got this kind of, um, uh, let's say, swing low here, uh, previous kind of shelf of our shoulder of support there, and it now should turn to a shoulder of resistance. So I've got I'm keeping an eye on that 68 uh, level again, 68.20, to kind of to, to form resistance for wave four and wave two. If that is how the pattern, if that, oh tongue tied, if that is how the pattern actually unfolds. So for next week, uh, I'll be looking for a kind of a, sh a short uh, correction in wave four, 
uh, to stay below 68 and then a further uh, five waves down in wave five. And at that point, then we'll look higher in wave two. Okay, that's uh, crude oil complete. It was actually nice to watch this uh, this week. Uh, you kind of put so much work in and you, um, you, you work towards a target and it hits it and sells down a nice impulsive pattern. So that was, it was nice to see that happen. Okay. Um, this is the S&P. Okay. Uh, we've got a, uh, a decline off the high. Again, the, the pattern off the high is, is less than impulsive. It may well work out. Um, it may well work out as a, a, a kind of unfolding pattern to the downside, but um, I'm kind of less uh, secure on this one. Uh, you can see the price is hanging below 28.72 again, which is good. Uh, 28.72 being the previous January high. Um, so obviously I'd like to see that kind of uh, become a kind of uh, a significant resistance level rather than a support level. Um, okay, so let's move into the hourly chart. We'll, let's talk about this chart first today. So you had the wave three high January, so A, B, C, D, E, wave four, and uh, five waves up possibly complete. Um, we could also call this uh, further low here uh, wave four, and we we might be calling we might be looking at uh, an ex extension in wave five. So you could be talking about one, two, three, four, and further high in wave five. Um, that would be kind of uh, the first alternate count at the moment uh, for now. Uh, we're going to see how this decline um, unfolds. And if we get a clear five, if we get a clearer five wave pattern down, um, then we're going to dispense of the alternate count. See, what I'm looking at here is a, a possible series of one twos, maybe. So one, two, one, two, or uh, maybe that could be one and two in here. And maybe even a further one, two, moving down in wave three. The fact that we're, we're selling down again this evening, um, back below that 28.72 handle is, is, is good. Uh, if we got a break of those, these previous peaks here, that fourth wave contraction and these previous, um, these previous peaks of price, that was uh, 28.63. So we've got a break of 28.60. Um, I could stay here and just watch it for the next hour, <laughs> for the next two hours, and and see if that unfolds. But I ain't going to do that. I'm just going to take the risk and, and um, call this market before it happens. Um, so, like I said, the the possible alternate count here would be that wave four is down at this previous low here, and we have um, a possible one, two, three, four, five on unfolding. Now, if we get a break of that. 2863 level that would rule out um, the idea that we have a five wave unfolding pattern and the and the reason being was this would be a this would be a, a crossover of a wave one and a wave four and that can't happen in an impulse pattern unless it's an ending diagonal so which is another alternate if you want to look at it that way uh, and you can see that I have that uh, alternate account shown here as well so uh, for now, I'm going to kind of stick my head out there and say that we, we I'm going to stick with the idea that this is unfolding into a five ways pattern to the downside. And we'll see how that works out early next week. Uh, further selling next week will kind of add weight to this uh, bearish outlook. Okay, uh, that is the S&P. Now we'll move on to silver. Silver is... It's not as clear cut as gold at the moment. We have this five wave pattern that we change that we uh, switched to this week, and we got a break of that uh, previous support and unfolding five waves uh, down. Um, I still don't view this in in any other way other than a correction lower and a C wave um, in a correction lower. So. I'm still looking for that initial sign, uh, initial uh, move off the low, and um, a switch in, in kind of long-term momentum from this incessant bearish uh, outlook to um, a bullish pattern again. 
So obviously everyone right now thinks that uh, silver is worth shit and it's never going to rise again. So that's exactly when you should be looking at uh, accumulating <laughs> a certain asset is if everybody hates it. You know, uh, I, I wish I bought property in, um, I wish I was around to, to <laughs> buy property when the wall fell, you know, that kind of way. Alrighty. Uh, that's the four-hour chart. Let's um, let's see what the hourly chart is doing. So as you can see, it, we've had a move off um, off the most extreme recent low. I'm still counting that as a third wave down. There is a possibility that it that is the uh, final complete low in wave five. We've yet to confirm that. And there's also a possibility that that this uh, today's low was um, a failed fifth wave, which would be good in terms of a Let's say um, a, a shift in momentum to the upside, rather like a um, a failed fifth wave usually would happen when the market just completely runs out of steam or you know loses um, the impetus to uh, to sell even lower. So we could have five waves complete. I'm not banking on that right now. Uh, we could also have a, a triangle kind of. Uh, occurring here in wave four and we may have a, a further break of that previous low here uh, on Monday. Um, for now I really want to see a 1363 hold and I want to see an impulse pattern to the upside and that's kind of short term that's what I'm looking at and we're kind of uh, banking on that at the moment but um, if that doesn't happen I think uh, if we get a break of uh, key resistance here at 1363 then we'll just have to work with that and work from that level out but i i view silver and the precious metals complex really in general as being just uh, obliterated and oversold at extremes that you just <laughs> are barely like, have gone beyond mentioning really They're just uh we're at kind of the end of the pale uh of of bearish um sentiment here and on the on the flip side of that, we're completely out of the water uh, on the over bullish side in um, in stocks, and that is not going to turn out well. I really hope you have your affairs in order on that side, because uh, this next bear market is is going to be brutal in the extreme, um, and very good for precious metals. I think. Okay, uh, so that's silver. Let's move on to the treasury market, which uh, had a nice spike lower this evening. Um, should we go to the four-hour chart? Yeah, we're kind of we're working on a five waves um, impulse pattern lower out of uh, a, a complete triangle um, wave four, and I'm thinking of moving this count up by one degree, and I'll probably do that next week. Uh, but for the purposes of this video, it does not doesn't matter really one iota um the idea being that this fourth wave is complete and we're moving down into a fifth wave uh okay so that's the previous fourth wave we may have uh wave one wave two wave one and wave two and last night we were calling this wave two and expecting a sell down uh in wave three today and we got a nice um sharp move lower uh so that kind of adds um that adds definitely adds weight to this uh, impulse pattern out of the triangle high. We won't get um, confirmation of the completion of this uh, triangle until we get a break of uh, of that of these previous support levels here. So 119 uh, to 118. Really, if we got a break in, into the 118 level, that would probably um, seal the deal for the end of that triangle. Okay, so next week, uh, I'm again looking for a further five waves down in wave three. So far, so good on Friday evening, getting a nice uh, spike lower in a possible third of a third. So uh, that definitely um, fits with the pattern right now. And um, next week, we'll look for um, five waves in wave three uh, and, and a possible further leg down in um in 10 year bonds okay so that is uh, the weekend video thanks to you all for watching and um have a great week oh yeah 
before I forget, get over to um, bowlings.org, join the email list, and uh, you can enjoy um, nightly updates next week. All right. Thanks so much, guys. Bye-bye. Have a great weekend. Godspeed.